Welcome to the Tony Awesome Fishing Show. Well, you know, we all love catching big fish, but sometimes you can have just as much enjoyment from catching small fish, what we call mini species. So, let's get on down the coast and I'll tell you a little bit more about the place we're going to be trying to catch some. Our venue for the day was the south coast of Hampshire for a little spot of mini fish catching using small hooks, small baits and fairly light tackle. That venue is called South Sea, and that's where most of the services run, including vehicles, I call them vehicles, are they vehicles, a vehicle of the sea? I don't know what you call it, it is a hovercraft. So it's not a boat, it's not a plane, it's not a helicopter, it is a creature in its own right. Now this section of waterway is very, very busy, from small craft to large. I mean, like very large, car ferries. It's also a historic area with World War II gun emplacements out there in the middle of the Solent that were there to protect the entrance for our shipping at Portsmouth and Southampton harbours. And still there's some commercial fishing activity that goes on there, potting, a bit of crabbing, a bit of trawling, some shellfish. There's still seafood coming out of that area. And while the hovercraft plies its dray backwards and forwards to the Isle of Wight, taking loads and loads of passengers over there, we were there trying to get those small hooks almost in between the people on the beaches. A bright blue sunny day on the south coast of England. Well, it's always going to get some people out there. Of course, the water temperature is so low, nobody in their right mind would think of swimming. I was there in broad daylight hours with Jerry Airy. He come down to have a bit of fishing with me. He likes mini fish fishing and we're going to see if we can't catch something. So how exactly is the best way to rig up for catching small fish? As a generalization, a lead at the bottom and a two or three hook paternoster. Let me show you, it can be used pretty well anywhere in the world. Okay, just imagine, and this is gonna be my spool of line. This is just 20 pound line. So if you're using, let's say 15 or 20 pound line, I don't use a shock leader. I don't need to, I'm only be casting light leads just 20 or 30 yards out into the beach to surf or off the rocks. Use small leads. I've got small leads like these. There is a standard, what we call an Arsley bomb with a swivel on the top, so it's a regular bomb shape fishing lead weight. I've also made some drop shot weights here with a little looper line drilled through, hammered that flat, drilled through there so I can tie or clip those on. Or if you're in snaggy ground over rocks, just get a piece of old lead pipe in that in that case is just copper wire. I've made it into a cylinder and I've tied off there. But what I would suggest doing is if you just get the end of your fishing line or the end of your, let's call it trace, and you do just one overhand loop, dead easy, just like that, and leave it longer than the diameter of the lead. So it's got to be longer, that's the diameter of the lead, than that. It's got to go over the top of that. And the reason for that is I can change leads much quicker if I tie the knot on. I've got to cut the knot off all the time. I'll show you what I mean. There's my loop of line holding that lead there. So if I put this one, the lead, through the loop here, back down through my other loop, you'll see it gives me my lead weight at the bottom end, just like this, just like that. But I can also undo this loop and change leads much easier. Now very close to that, I just tie a regular, you must have a bit more line. It is very easy, these are easy and if you get broken off a lot with rough ground, they're easy to retie. I just get an overhand loop in here. I go through twice, once, twice, I push a loop through like that. Very, very close to the lead. Pull it tight and that leaves me, what's that, three inches long. Then I cut one of the loops like that. Now, so there we are, just to give you a guide. There's my lead just here, there's the lead there. Up here is 
my snood now because I've cut the loop. So I'm going to keep it very short about there. I don't want a great big long snood because that's going to move around too much and I might miss the bite. So about four inches, I cut it off. I get myself a small hook. In this case, it's a fresh water. It's called a B983 wide gape specialist hook. This one happens to be barbless purely because I'm just showing it to you. But make sure if you're fishing with worms and that in the sea, you're going to have to have barbs on there. Otherwise, you're going to miss all the fish. Pull it tight. There's the hook. Don't pull the hook in. Your fingers always pull on the, the neck of the, of the knot there. Any little tag ends you've got left. Snip off. I try not to snip them off too close. So there you can see there is one hook of a two or three hook paternoster. So there you can see there's a lead at the bottom. It's going to be hanging like this. A loop that's been cut with a hook, a loop here that's been cut with a hook, and there you can see is the loop. Now you can put that through sometimes the eye of the hook and make it doubly strong, but for small fish, I suggest just giving it a snip like this. And you can see you can keep it nice and short about there. Throw that away, put those down, and you can see it just tie the hook on there. Up here, you can either tie a loop, we can tie a swivel, and then that goes to your main line. So that's the rig. Cast it out, small baits on it, at least that way you're sure to get a nibble from something. There we go guys. It's taken a couple of hours to get one, but it's a little baby bass. On the rag, one of those small hook rigs there. Even put his fin up for you. Let's get it back. And that, I believe, is more, <clears throat> rather than a skill, is more just a state of tide by waiting for the tide to uh, to pick up. Got a tiny little mouth for his size. He's got his spines up and he's still got the same number of spines as a big bass. Well, better than nothing, guys. With the flood tide pushing us off the beach, we had to move along the promenade and fish right off the stonework where the wall actually touched the high water sea mark. This is an ideal time for catching small fish because the small fish will come in a little bit more confidently when the tide is high. When it's low, but a lot of places it tends to be shallow, they don't feed so well. But high water's good, and Jerry here has a light LRF rod. He's touch ledger in there, in case you want to, want to notice that. He has, doesn't have the rod in a tripod. He's holding his finger across the braid line. He's watching the rod top, as well as waiting for that tiny tentative tug on the line that tells him he could have a fish there. It's all a question of waiting. We're taking on a cockle, size 10 hook. Little baby LRF rod, and I'm guessing it's the little baby Ballon. Pretty, pretty fish. Really nice. I'm chuffed. Another one for the photo album. Time to put this little fella back, I think. Okay, here. Everybody thinks you need worms to catch things in the sea. No, you don't. This is an Aldi seafood cocktail mix. Bought it and froze it from Aldi supermarket. I'm sure other supermarkets do the same thing. There we are, a little, a little foil packet here, just to keep the bait chilled and cool and in good order. This is a seafood cocktail mix. Squid rings, green lip mussels, little prawns, simply prawn things. There are some king prawns in there too, which are a much nicer bait. And my favourite of all, the cockle. I mean, it's such an easy bait to use. Just the one on a little small size 12 hook. Little tiny paternoster, about a half ounce weight. LRF rod, and you're good to go. There you are. Of course, you will need to make yourself up a little foil and foam pack. They are a little bag. Don't take the side. This is radiator, insulator. That's it. Seven pounds for a huge roll. You know, bite and share it with your mates if you feel generous. But worth every penny of it. Line your cool box with it, make a little bag up, and it will these will stay cold and chilled for two, three days with a with a with a blue little blue ice pop pack. Now I've never actually thought of using a mixed bag of seafood like this, 
but it makes a lot of sense because you've got a wide variety of flavors or anything that can affect the senses of the fish, different types of shellfish there and shrimps and prawns. Who knows? I think that's a good idea, guys. Rather than just buy one type of shellfish, go into your supermarket, see if you can't pick up a good mixed bag of shellfish. Yes, it's gonna be a bit expensive, but if you're catching fish, I think you'll agree, it's well worth it. With the high water coming right in like this, there's every chance you could get fish like mullet coming in, feeding in literally inches of water. Mackerel could come in close as well. So you don't need distance casting. You in fact, are gonna put yourself out of the small fish range very often when you cast too far. You're going past where the small fish are living and feeding. You have to imagine that on this stonework, there's lots of little barnacles and crustaceans and bits of shrimp there. And here you go, Jerry's got Another rash, look at the colours of this one. Bright green ras. I mean, is that a ballon? Is that a balans? Is it a corkwing ras? You guys out there know, you're the experts. And Jerry called that one on a, a set of mackerel feathers cut in half, the ones that you use with the small hooks. Here we go. There's the rig, the small hook rig with like half pieces of uh, ragworm on there. You could use cockle like Jerry is using. Obviously, you're not going to co cast out very far with a soft bait. Also, watch this green weed. Do not ever tread on any green or black areas of the rock. They are lethal. They're going to be wet, and especially if it rains. If the tide's out, you can still uh, twist an ankle on there. So just keep your feet on the dry stone. You should be okay. A light cast out. Just tighten down to that very light lead. If you tighten down too much, you'll be bumping it towards you. You just barely take up the tension and then touch ledger, holding, waiting for C. Well, you just gotta wait until you either see or feel those bites. And here's one now. And listen, small fish like this are fun to catch. We have seen people take them away in buckets and they obviously boil them up and cook them. That's decimating our fish stocks. There's no need for it. If you want to eat fish like that, just go into the supermarket and buy something. It's actually better to buy fish in the supermarket or shellfish or whatever, because it's going to cost you just as much to buy the ragworm to go and catch these small fish on. So watch out for size limits. Most of the fish we put back, if we can, is what it's about. It's called sport fishing for us. We're not fishmongers.